The Reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jessie, travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. Listen, I'm here today and I have a very special guest, an anointed woman of God, an anointed pastor that's doing a tremendous work in the state of Arkansas. She's in the city of Stuttgart. So she's going to be my special guest today. So I want you to grab that pen, grab that pad. You might want to write down the address so you can visit those of you that's looking for a church home and looking for somebody who don't just preach but actually has a vision, who's doing something in the community. You know, Jesus told us when he rose, he told us, he said, go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and into the utmost parts of the world. Well, at that time, he literally meant what he said, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. So now for us, we take that as our city, then our state, then our nation. So I want you to make welcome to the Deliverance broadcast tonight on the voice of deliverance, none other than Pastor Ernestine Thomas. God bless you, Pastor Thomas. God bless you. Good to have you on the program today. And uh, I want you to really just share your vision with the people of Central Arkansas. Okay. Let them know. What you're doing. Well, matter of fact, what's the name of your ministry? Turning Point Ministries. Turning Point Ministries. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, before we get started, so they know you're not a novice, some of the new upstart. How long have you been actually in the ministry? Wow, about 37 years. 37 years in yes. ministry. You've been pastoring how long? Pastoring 22 years. Pastoring 22 years. Yes. Okay, so now you heard that. Now, so I'm not talking to a novice. We're talking to somebody that's got experience dealing with people and, uh, in the same place. Let me say that. She's been pastoring 22 years in the same place. She ain't uh -huh. jumped around and shuffled the church like a job like most folks do because she knows she has an assignment with the city that she's in. So uh, before we get too far in it, why don't you just, just look into the camera and tell them what is the vision statement of your ministry? And then we get to talk about your vision. Well, my uh, vision statement, uh, Prophet Ford, is to minister to the total man, both spiritual emotional, and economically. And I noticed that you had a statement that said that uh, you, you're turning lives through faith. So, yeah. so let's talk about that. Okay. One of the things that uh, when God called me, and I, I believe the call has been on my life ever since I was a child, uh, most ministers down there, pastors, recognize me as mother. So, And I think it's because that mother figure is there, uh, even as a child, I was always just loving toward children and elderly people. And uh, during the time that God began to really deal with me and I got serious with Christ, I began to uh, do street ministries. Okay. And in course of that, um, many were worn to Christ. And after they were delivered, uh, I had to have a place that we could help preserve these souls. Uh, many times they were getting delivered and returning to the same environment. And uh, I was uh, working uh, with my home church, and I would take, ask my husband if it would be okay to take my paycheck to rent a building so that they would not have to return to the same invested environment uh, there. And I began to envisualize so many uh, needs uh, because there were so many people that were hurt, emotional, were incest was involved and of course singles um you know doing a lot of housekeeping and so forth and the lord i mean favor just came upon me uh for uh this young man gave me a, a house where we sheltered four women and we went to oklahoma to an indian reservation and um, we did a revival there and the lord told me he said it's time to pack up and move the stuttgart he said, your assignment is just about through uh, there in the rock. And meanwhile, while we were doing that, we uh, we came in contact with children, a mother and her, her children. 
And make long story short, we adopted uh, adopted those two children. We got involved with foster care, and I had a passion just for hurting children that had no father figure or mother figure in their lives. And um, we adopted two of 11. There was a sibling of 11. And uh, that was just, I guess, the mercy for hurting children as well as the adult. And uh, before we moved there, uh, we rented three houses there in North Little Rock where we had four women that we housed. And one of the vital things that was um, needed was to get them educated in areas. Yeah. So we began to uh, help them to get their GED. Uh, some went on to college. There were programs uh, such as uh, uh, support groups that we used to kind of educate them in areas sexual abuse where most of them had been, you know, just uh, in abusive situations uh, there. So uh, God gave us favor once again. And as we got ready to move, God told me to use my home, my house in Little Rock to shelter the other four ladies. So, and it was very productive uh, when we did that. Uh, we, I guess, graduated maybe about eight out of my home before we, you know, moved to Stuttgart. Okay. Now, so that, that shows the, the, the compassion. That shows me the heart, the nurturing heart uh-huh. of the woman of God as she pastures, as she said, not only children, but elderly as well. Yeah. But so what I want you to do, because, you know, you said Turning Point Ministries' vision is to minister to the total man by providing diverse services for spiritual, uh, social, and emotional growth. Right. So I want you to just, just look into the camera and talk to that person that may be you know, tired of just church as usual, mm-hmm. looking for a place to go, and right. talk to them about these, your main goal for all services rent. Right. Okay. Uh, one of the things, uh, you know, sometimes people make a lot of excuses, and a lot of time we can agree that people are genuinely hurting, and they come out, they're hopeless, and uh, they, they will tell us, this is why I turn to dope, because There's no services around here that are rendered to give us hope. And uh, we take those destitute uh, statements and we begin to visualize and ask God, how does he want us to do this? So God said, okay, let's begin to provide aftercare service for children so that it can help them economically uh, with that. So in the afternoon from 3 until 6, we were holding aftercare services for uh, mothers of uh, working fathers that had jobs or uh, were going to school, and we wanted to be able to provide that for uh, them and mentoring for our youth. Uh, many times our youth uh, had nothing to do but stand on the streets and kind of get themselves in trouble. So uh, we provided, uh, at that time, fathers uh, to the fatherless. And they began to take them to games, take them to movies, play ball with them, get them involved in something positive uh, that would kind of build their self-esteem up as well as educate them. That's a blessing. You know, yeah. we, I was when you were talking about that hopeless. Mm-hmm. And that, that hopeless spirit, you know, there's, there's no goal, there's no vision. They don't yeah. see any way right. to come out. I was, I was reading after a man of God the other day mm-hmm. in Toronto, and he was talking about how, when God sent him there, right. what he did was he started looking at what was going on in the correctional system. Mm-hmm. So he got involved with the youth. Mm-hmm. And no, in other words, he wasn't being paid for it. Right. He just wanted to reach him. Right. And he said when he first went in there, he started dealing with the gang members. Uh-huh. And he said he got shot at several times, uh-huh. but he wouldn't leave. He, right. t- he just played the blood of Jesus and kept going. Mm-hmm. And now he's looking back over it over the last 18 years. Mm-hmm. This is his 19th year, and this one young man who had been in college, right. got involved with the wrong people, mm-hmm. lost hope, was out in the gangs. Right. This guy got him, got him into a, a program, first of all, uh-huh. and then as he began to deal with it, he got him into another program where he could finish his education. Wow. And Good. when he got his education finished, he just, you know, he went on. Right. Years later, two years ago, uh-huh. this young man walked up on him and said, uh, his name is Martinez. He said, how right. you doing, Mr. Martinez? And he looked at him and he says, uh, you don't know who I am, do you? Uh-huh. He said, I'm sorry, sir, but I don't I don't know you. Uh-huh. And he told me, he said, I'm the young man who was in college, 
and had gotten the wrong lifestyle and because of your program, get me back on my feet. Now the man is an attorney. Wow. So see, he gave him hope. Wow. And so that's what I'm saying. When you're talking about getting them an education, yes. you're putting them back in society, mm-hmm. not to be a statistic, right. but to make a difference. Right. And so I know that's one of, you, one of your main goals is to render help to the hopeless, the destitute. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people are hopeless and they, they make wrong decisions. Right. Because they think, what is, you know, you talk to some of the young men, especially those involved in the games, and they talk about stuff like, mm-hmm. uh, well, I'll be dead for I'm 25 anyway, so mm-hmm. I might well just do what I can do. But yeah. when you can give them hope. I was looking here in the scriptures. Yeah. It said in the book of uh, Romans, talking about Abraham, Romans 4, 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom he believed, even who God, who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. Mm-hmm. When God said this, Abraham was barren. Right. In other words, he was not in the natural what God said he was. Right. And in the natural, there was no way to be what God said he was. Right. But because God spoke to him, uh-huh. vision for his life, the next verse says, who against hope, mm-hmm. believed in hope. No, yeah. There was no natural reason to expect this. Right. But because God said it, it brought him a hope. Mm-hmm. So that's what I see uh, Turning Point Ministries is doing. Right. Maybe speaking into a person's life right. that has no hope. That's it. And then it gives them that spark of hope. So, okay, we're on a trial. But you know, their mother have told them, their grandparents have told them, mm-hmm. some teachers have told them, right. but they listen to their peers and other folks. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people put a tag on you. Right. You know, you're like, you're no good daddy, mm-hmm. you ain't going to be nothing, your granddaddy wasn't about right. nothing, his daddy wasn't nothing, right. all the men in this household wind up, and you're going to be a jailbird like the rest of them. Right. Well, that's been drilled in that child, and he right. starts trying to act it out. Because mm-hmm. one thing the young man in, in Toronto did was he told him, he said, you know what, yeah. you're not going to die before you're 20 years old. He wow. said, and you are not a gangster. You right. have purpose. God has a reason for your life. Mm-hmm. And they be, he was in a situation where because he, he finally, after five years, the government hired him. Wow. So now he can't preach the gospel, but he knew how to keep his words positive. Wow. And yeah. he kept speaking hope to those young men mm-hmm. and had literally changed that course. Wow. Because most of the time, what they're looking for is love and just someone to just listen to them. And even though some of the wrong choices I made as a, a, a child, or, or, or even as an adult, uh, to in, get their faith watered up a lot of time, I would tell them what I went through. And as, as a mother, you know, it, it was a, probably a negative situation that I made the choice. I was brought up in a godly atmosphere. But I told them, I said, look at me now, how God has changed my life and what I have. I said, when I met my husband, I was, uh, you know, uh, buying a home. I said, I was a single mother. But to the single classes, that's why it has been effective because sometimes we think we've got to have a, a man, you know, uh, staying with us or, uh, you know, do other ungodly things to make things work. But I use my life to kind of help to build their faith up, to let them know that God is not of a respectable person. If he did it for me, he'll do the same for them. Well, And, and I want you to, to do and to know this, too, mm-hmm. even though. She's speaking from her own experience. Mm-hmm. I have friends that are single fathers mm-hmm. that have raised their girls with dignity right. and let them know right. all men are dogs. Right. There is hope in life. That's and, it. And, you know, so young men have to understand you don't have to have that woman living with you to be secure. There are things you can mm-hmm. learn how to do. Right. And, you know, uh, if you take heed and realize you can get up from here, from mm-hmm. where you are right now, as bad as it is right now, your life can change. Right. Your life can be changed. If you hear right. what she's saying, what we're trying to tell you is that God is that answer. Right. We, we're not talking about religion. Right. And you got to understand this is a pastor, so we do believe in the local church. Right. We do want you to come to church. Mm-hmm. But we want you to understand, don't base your future on what you have seen in church. Right. Because every church is actually not Christ-centered, but then every church is not as bad as you think it is because That's of that right. experience you had some time ago mm-hmm. of what you have seen. We know that they are imperfect people. Mm -hmm. We know that there are people in the pulpit in a position to be a mentor and have failed you. And you've seen them in the city, you know, living ungodly lives. Mm -hmm. But again, I want you to understand that's not the plot of every pastor. So the local church is a place where you can come. Jesus told us to go into all the world Mm -hmm. and make disciples. Right. You got to be trained. So to be disciple, you got to, first of all, you got to be willing to be disciple. Mm-hmm. I mean, your attitude got to change, and then you got to show up. Right. It's like you can't get an education if you don't go to class. It don't matter. They give you a full-ride scholarship. If you don't show up, mm-hmm. you're going to lose the scholarship. 
right. and then go back to the street. So right. uh, Turning Point Ministries is trying to be an international harvest center to, to, to bring you out of the world Man. but into the kingdom and then develop you with some, with some, with some principles that can make a difference in your life long term. So watch this. You can go back into society right. and make a difference. Like she's given her testimony as a single mom, but then she met a man, mm -hmm. a godly man. Mm -hmm. And and they've been together for years now, Man. touching lives. Right. So the same thing can happen. You just got to be patient. Mm -hmm. You got to understand. Uh, let's talk about this for a minute. Okay. Is, is it difficult for you to get the young people, that particularly, to see who they are in Christ once you get them off the streets without hope? Well, we've had some pretty productive, fruitful uh, ones that have come up, uh, you know, off the street. And what I found to be more effective, Prophet Ford, is the support group. There were so many that were shamed. They had been through bullying and uh, so many that were rejected because of their past. But, uh, I, again, I normally use my... Uh, lifestyle on how God has brought me through, then others will tell their testimony. But uh, really, we've seen some very fruitful young men and women. And uh, one of the uh, young guys could not stay out of jail. We got into foster care. He could not stay out of jail. And um, when he came in and Pastor Robert began to minister to him and really show him love because he never had a relationship with the father, his father. And after he felt that love, because my husband kind of talked a little tough and rough, but it's in love. And uh, I was telling him, I said, maybe if you tone your voice down, Robert. But the guy told him, he said, no, I like that tough. I want it. I can identify with that. And even with our summer camp that we have, Camp Joseph, I would, you would think that uh, they wouldn't want to come, but they love him. Every summer from June to August, we run from about 47, maybe to 139 uh, children. We feed them. The church feed them. We are not on a, a, a government program, but the church pick them up, feed them breakfast, uh, have a, a Bible study with them, and they do their little activities or go on field trips. And they are some happy, happy, happy people. Last year, because, you know, a little displacement, we didn't get a chance to do it. But we tried to educate them both spiritual and naturally. And Pastor Robert uh, has become their little father there in Stuttgart. Well, see, I think that's excellent. Even like what I was just saying, see, you was looking at the situation from a mother's heart. Right. And then Pastor Robert was dealing with it as a father and as a man, right. and then dealing with a young man mm -hmm. who has had no boundaries. Right. So see, when he step up mm -hmm. and put boundaries, see, teenagers right. push boundaries, but they want boundaries. Right. If you right. keep if you keep bagging them, they're going to keep pushing. Right. But it's got to come somewhere when it stops. And see, just the tone mm -hmm. of your husband's voice right. and, and, and that look in his eye, uh -huh. the guy, first of all, He's already ministered to him, so he know he loves him. Right. But now he's saying, I love you too much to let you go past this. Right. I'm not going to let you continue. Mm -hmm. And then out of his own mouth, the young man said, that's what I'm looking for. Right. And so I want you fathers to realize that. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you're so passive and you're just trying to be this buddy to your kid. Right. And right now he don't need a buddy. No. He needs a daddy. Right. He needs a man to stand up, mm -hmm. take him, mm -hmm. set boundaries while he loves him. Mm -hmm. And, let, you know. Remember when you was young, your mama used to tell you, yeah. I'm just doing this because I love you. Uh -huh. And then she gave you the worst beating you ever had. <laughs> yes. But why? I'm trying to put some discipline in your life. Right. I'm trying to curb you to let you know there are consequences to life. Right. And maybe if I can put enough pressure and inflict enough pain now, mm -hmm. you'll avoid the pain of society. You'll exactly. avoid the pain of prison. Right. So uh, let's talk about living with purpose for a little bit. Okay. Okay. Good. And I, uh, what I see a lot of times, uh, Minister Ford, as uh, you were saying, people don't know why they were born, uh, what they were called to do in life. Uh, the one of the programs and our support group for the teens is what we do. We start pretty much with the basic. Let them know how much God loved them, and just because uh, we fall doesn't necessarily mean that you're a failure in life. And uh, we tell them that you'll never be the one that will say, be any more righteous than you are now. You may fall, but you get up, start all over again. And uh, one of the uh, things that really touched my heart were the ones that have gotten out there uh, 
with the wrong company a lot of time, and they return and say, I wish I had listened the first time. I messed up, but the mercy, because we work uh, in conjunction with the police department and with the juvenile system down there. So uh, Ms. Fonda does a, a super job with working with me, with the children, because she knows that we're solid in our belief and that we are there as a support base uh, for those children. So even those that step out, they get in the wrong environment, get involved with drugs, uh, alcohol, uh, and basically with the girls, we have a lot of teenage pregnancy down there, uh, down there, and they say I'm old-fashioned, so I really try to put the uh, young ladies that can identify with them, but I do explain, I never get off the word of God, that, you know, but God... Old-fashioned is a standard. Yeah. In fact, the Bible tells us, you know, go back to find the old path, uh -huh. turn to the old lamb. Right. And if we move them, if we remove those foundations, mm -hmm. what the righteous is going to do. Right. So uh, while we still got time, I want you to look into the camera and okay. tell people how they can get involved with you, how they can support you, how they can, uh, you know, at what level okay. do you like for them to support you, either, you know, uh, on a weekly basis, monthly basis, annually, right. how can they involve, get involved with you? Okay. Okay. If you desire to become a partner with, Turning Point Ministries, uh, on a weekly or monthly basis, uh, you know, you can uh, send in your donations. Uh, our P.O. Box is P.O. Box 296, that's Stuttgart, Arkansas. And uh, also, because we are getting ready to venture back into uh, setting captive free, which we originally started out, our P.O. Box uh, because we'll be setting up substations uh, around the state. It's uh, P.O. Box 1668, North Little Rock, Arkansas, 72115. 72115. And then uh, <clears throat> if you desire to become a partner, and you can mail it in to us at both of those P.O. Boxes. We are located on full five. East Michigan Avenue, Stuttgart, Arkansas, and God told me to change uh, the title of our um, the outreach, I mean the ministry, church ministry, to Turning Point Harvest Center, Turning Point Harvest Center, because right now, uh, of course, he's so faithful. We paid the building off in about 13 years, and uh, you know that helped to really build our faith up. That was a big turning point for us because we don't have hundreds of thousands of people uh, profit for it, but they're faithful people. So we really need a lot of volunteers uh, that are degreed in that area to, you know, if you uh, donate some of your time and service to us, we certainly could use it down in that area. And of course, uh, we were, the bank has given us a house down there. We're looking for uh, more property because we're doing um, twofold, uh, uh, you know, program right now where we'll be able to work with the juvenile as well as the adults that are coming out of uh, prison and juvenile there, along with our um, pregnancy nest that we have down uh, there for our teenagers that are pregnant. We don't condone that, but because they've made that mistake, we want them to see God love and to, you know, uh, kept them to know that God has forgiven them and there is hope and there's another chance that they can turn their lives around uh, by being in this program. Okay. Choices have consequences. Yeah. So listen, now, she was very nice. She didn't, <laughs> she didn't give you a particular amount that you have to yeah. send to be a partner. Yeah. Right. But I want you to think about it. I mean, send at least $25 a month. Amen. And listen, we I have partners in my ministry that yeah. send gifts annually. Some send right. a gift quarterly. Some are send it every six months. Get involved. Right. And she said something there that's important. We want you to know that some of you that have expertise in your field, mm -hmm. if you would volunteer your time to share your expertise right. so that they can reach these children. Right. Listen, they don't have a, they, they're not charging a fee right. for the children to come in. When right. people come out of prison, they can't pay a fee no way. Right. So she didn't talk much about going into the prison. Mm -hmm. But if you could volunteer and come down, and help them. That would be tremendous yes. at no yes. charge. You know, you, you're showing your service and you're coming. They don't have to give you no gas money. You're just mm -hmm. showing up 
right. working with them in the confines of their program. There's one thing about volunteering. Mm -hmm. You still have to work with her right. as if you were a paid employee because right. God has given her the vision. Right. And you're hooking up with her vision. And right. you're her hands, her arms, her outreach to reach out and touch people yeah. uh, in a way that's going to be positive. And one thing I found out, Pastor Thomas, mm -hmm. uh, by going into the prison, they want to know you're going to come back. They want you to right. be consistent. You're going to be right. there. You come in there to sleep yeah. for five months, you're gone. Right. So when a person starts volunteering, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you want to find out up front, how, how long can you do this? Right. So we can set up. Uh, a precedent of you yeah. know, if, if the person said I can give you six months, right? Then okay, I got a six month program. We right. gonna have this, and then next six months we'll do something else. Something else. So the okay. people there don't get this expectation uh -huh. for a long term thing, and then the person dissolves or just right. you know vanishes on. Right, right, right. And that's what we do. We we've really seen a a, a fruitful uh you know outturn of uh the residents that are coming out, and uh, some that really should have gotten time the mercy of God has been there and my pastor would tell me all the time girl that's what you got is the mercy ministry and I know to whom much is given much is required so you know one of my uh, ultimate goals is to give back that love and mercy that God has given unto me to others and to let them see the love of God through my life uh, by uh, implementing shelters and feeding program clothing uh, you know for them in fact quarterly uh, uh, profit forward, we send clothes down to guys that are getting ready to come out and they're not junk clothes. They're, I mean, just nice thing that, you know, the, the warden uh, had written us a letter saying those are some of the nicest things that we could have done. So we do take clothes donation, uh, especially for the men that are coming out of, of uh, prison. Well, praise the Lord. Listen, our time has expired. Those of you that are looking for a church home and looking for somebody who don't just preach but actually has a vision, is doing something in the community, you know, our time Jesus has expired us. for the day. But on, on this closing note, I want to suggest to some of you that will be uh, donating clothes, buy some. I mean, <laughs> just, you know, stuff is on sale all the time. Yeah. You shop for yourself. Right. Don't, don't, everything shouldn't have to come out your closet. Right. Why? Because we're trying to bring that dignity up, that worth. Mm -hmm. up. No, somebody cares about you. Right. You have value. You yeah. have worth. And that's going to create self-worth, self-esteem right. for them to come forth and know. And it yeah. also changes their attitude about the house of God, right. the household of faith and the ministry. Right. God bless you. Appreciate you for being with us. This is Prophet Ford letting you know once again, Jesus will pull you through if you and stand the pool. Amen. God bless you. Encouraged through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas. 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 164091, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's Word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.